Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you guys how you can use Surfshark and talk a little bit about the most common use cases for VPNs and how Surfshark can aid you in your endeavors. Okay, so let's get started here. Of course, if you guys are interested in Surfshark or if you'd like to learn more about it uh, or you want to go straight to the pricing or discounts, everything will be in the description down below. After your subscription, you will get a download link. And if you don't, you can just go to the download page right here after having made the subscription of course just to make sure that you have access to the application otherwise you won't be able to log in once you're logged into the application after having downloaded surfshark on your preferred device it will look obviously like this and it'll look very similar no matter which device you're using so if you know how to use it on the computer, you'll be able to use it on your PC, your iPad or iOS or whatever it is. So very simply, let's just go with one of the most popular use cases. I would say there are three main use cases. The first one and the most popular one is I would say streaming. So a lot of people like to stream content from all over the world, because if you didn't know, they are region restricted. So if you're not in the area where, let's say, a specific show on Netflix is available, you will not be able to watch it unless you use a good, reliable VPN uh, that works for that. That's compatible, basically, with a streaming platform. So in this case, I would just select the UK server. And after that, I would go to Netflix and I'll be able to find whatever show that is available in the UK. But there's no need to connect right now since I just want to demonstrate. So that is the first use case. The second use case is just people that want to protect their data while they're on public Wi-Fi. Because if you didn't know, if you're on public Wi-Fi, you're really not going to have a good time if somebody ends up stealing your data, especially if you have sensitive information on your uh, devices. So yeah, you always want to use the VPN to protect your data in online activities while you're on public Wi-Fi. The third use case is simply protecting yourself while torrenting, because if you didn't know, torrenting is uh, an activity that basically connects users together and whoever is downloading the same torrent is going to be able to see everybody else's IP addresses. Uh, so if you're downloading a torrent that let's say 10 other people are downloading, these 10 other people are going to be able to see, of course, IP address, which can be used to find your general location. And that's not information information that you want out on the internet. So you always want to use a VPN. Okay, so now you know how to connect to Surfshark and what are the most popular use cases for it. Now let me explain about the two most important features that you need to understand. Now, if you're looking for details about everything regarding Surfshark, again, you can check the review down below. But in this video, I simply want to talk about the most important security features that you want to keep in mind. And we're talking only about the VPN, because if you didn't know, Surfshark does have a complete package. Again, you'll find all the details in the pricing links down below. But what I want to talk about today is number one, the kill switch is going to disable your internet connection if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly. So this will make sure that you're only going to be connected to the internet while you're secured by the VPN. Otherwise, it will cut your connection to make sure that none of your information gets leaked out to your ISP, government, or anybody else uh, that could be prying on your information if you're on public Wi-Fi, for example. Now, the second thing you want to keep in mind is that if you're ever having trouble connecting to Surfshark, you probably want to just keep this on automatic because it could be that some servers are not entirely compatible with the WireGuard protocol, which is what I'd normally recommend they use because it's the fastest performing one. But for this tutorial, we'll just stick to the automatic. So yeah, now you have Bypasser, which is not necessarily the most important feature, but it's a very nice feature because it'll allow you to choose which applications are routed through the VPN and which are not. So for example, I can have one application like my torrenting client use the VPN while the rest of my connection uh, does not use the VPN. So a good example of when this can be useful is if I want my Netflix application to use the VPN, but not my Google Chrome, because I don't want my Google Chrome to start giving me CAPTCHA prompts, because when your IP address changes on Google Chrome, it'll start giving you the CAPTCHA prompts to make sure that you're not a robot. So in order to avoid that, I don't want Google Chrome to think that I'm constantly changing my IP address so that it doesn't give me any of these CAPTCHA prompts. So to me, these are the most important things you want to look out for. Of course, there are a couple of features that'll help you if you're in a censorship heavy country. There's a speed tester. There's an ad blocker. 
Uh, again, all of these other features that come with the one and one plus plans. You have static IP and multi hub specialty servers and dedicated IP is obviously a paid service, which will give you your own IP address. Uh, and you have over 3200 servers in 100 countries, which is a huge number. And probably the best feature is you'll be able to secure up to an unlimited number of devices with just a single subscription. So you'll be able to share it around with as many friends and family members as you would like which is wonderful news if you're looking to secure a lot of devices or if you just want a budget VPN. This is basically the best budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost without sacrificing any of the necessary or bonus features for that matter. And it still gets the job done as far as torrenting, streaming, and just protecting your data overall. Perhaps my biggest criticism of Surfshark is just that it's not necessarily as quick as big boys like like ExpressVPN and NordVPN. Of course, if you're interested in Surfshark or any of the VPNs that I mentioned, you'll find everything you need as far as reviews and links to pricing and discounts in the description down below. So that's basically it for this video. Comment below if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.